What is up guys? It's the Perfect Eight Cup Series here, here with another video. And for this video, I am going to show you how I make one of my racetracks. I was going to build a racetrack for the next two races on the Perfect Eight Cup Series schedule as the track I'm working on today is Charlotte Motor Speedway. A few things I just want to go over before I start talking about how you make the actual track itself. Well, most about, I'd say, half and half, half my tracks are on the styrofoam, as you can see here, and the other half are on cardboard. I'll sh I'm going to show you how I make my styrofoam tracks. So with all the supplies you need for a styrofoam track um, it's going to range you probably it's gonna be a little expensive so it'll probably be about anywhere from 50 to 75 dollars maybe 100 it depends on how big of a styrofoam piece you get um, or what you cut it into they they give you eight or at least at Home Depot they give you or well you you have to buy an 8 by 4 eight foot by four foot styrofoam board and you can have them cut it into whatever shape you or or well whatever sizes you want but um but how much supplies you got I mean if you if there's grass because I think that that the fake grass is pretty expensive um if you have some of the supplies I mean paint spackle um caulking I, there's there's a lot a lot to making a racetrack on styrofoam, but I will say, styrofoam racetracks. If if you're looking to make a racetrack for that'll last you years, this will do it. A styrofoam track, a track on styrofoam. The way I'm showing you how to make it, that will last you years. Chandler Motor Speedway. That I built that back in 2015. I think Martinsville is about the same age. Bristol, Bristol was kind of a long project, so longer project, so a few years old, too. I mean, those tracks hold up really well. Another issue, or an issue with the styrofoam, is that it can be really tough to store. So you need to have some storage space. We we really, I'll I'll show you guys real quick. Take you out of here into my room. This is how I store my racetracks. I apologize for the messy room. So here's my bed and Evergreen, Wisconsin. I built that in two pieces. So these are the Wisconsin tracks. Um, oh, that's just cardboard. New Hampshire's right here. Um, Chandler's right here. I think Prescott's down there. Um, yeah. And then under my bed, don't know how well you can see, Memphis Motor Speedway. This is Martinsville. This is Bristol. Um, there's South Mountain. That's going to be one of the races still on the schedule. And then right here, I have the two, two pieces to Daytona in here. Um, take you out of there just real quick. And then over in the corner of the... Oh, hi, doggy. This is my dog, Cody. What a good boy. What a good boy. Anyways, so here's other parts of Daytona. So I built Daytona, and I also built Wisconsin Motor Speedway in several, in a couple different pieces. I built, I built Daytona in four pieces. I had two, um, two four by four foot by four foot pieces of styrofoam and then two two feet by four feet um slabs so and i just connected them with these i just stick them in there i mean it, so if you want to if you need more storage room i recommend that i don't want to make this too long because I mean, the video is already going to be pretty long. So let's get into it. First thing you do is 
just kind of draw out the track. You At least you have to draw the outside border of the track you're working on. So you can see here I've drawn out Charlotte Motor Speedway. Um, you can see the roval. Um, you don't have to do any of the stuff on the inside because you're going to be, all this is going to be the same material. It's going to be out of the spa, or the joint compound. But, I mean, you at least have to do the outside border of your track because that's where we're going to line up the masking tape. Or, that the joint compound tape. I don't know what other names they have for that. But, you at least need to do the outside border of the track. So, how you can find, pretty much find out what track, um, what do you call it? How, how you can shape your track is, I mean, pretty simple. Just go on Google Maps, is there's Charlotte. So just kind of look up images online and you, sh you, you, you should be able to get aerial views of the track. So after you've drawn at least the outside, out, the outside borders of the track, and that is, um, after that, we're going to put on the joint compound tape. So, I don't know how much this is. It's pretty, I think, five, ten dollars maybe. It depends where you get it. But you're just going to pretty much line it up over the, um, pretty much over the styrofoam board. You're pretty much going to cover the entire board with joint compound as our pavement. So, let's see. So first things first, just get this open and I mean, get to work on it. So I've just finished putting down the joint compound tape. One of the things you want to do with this tape is you want to overlap it just a little bit. You see here, just want to overlap it a little bit. Now the next step is we're going to do the caulking. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to want to put caulking on the styrofoam. You're just going to want to do it pretty much all around the borders um, of the track. You're pretty much going to do it all over just so that way you can get a nice level surface when you put down the joint compound. So you get, I don't know if you, you're able to, you get one of these. I don't know what these tools are called, but for caulking and then just pretty much line her up, push down and just run it like that. Make some nice smooth lines. So pretty much like that you want to avoid globs like I accidentally did right here. But just nice and narrow lines and then you're just going to do pretty much repeat the process so say do it Right here, I think's good. Do that line. Just so it gives you a level. So when you put down the joint compound, you're able to have a level racetrack. You won't you won't have the surface have going up, down, bumps. It'll be consistent. It'll be nice and flat. At least that's the thinking. But then so you'll just do that and then every little bit Maybe just throw in a marker here. Um, yeah. So after after you do the caulking around the track, um, it depends how long it takes for the caulking to dry. It should 
I mean, this might take a couple of hours. It might take a day. So, yeah, pretty much. That's all I got to say. Alrighty, the caulking's done. Now we just have to let this dry. It'll be a few hours and then we can start putting on the joint compound. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. The um, caulking has dried. And now it's time to um, put on the joint compounds. You see here, here's a, a can of what the joint compound can come in. You could pick these up at hardware store Ace, I mean, but if you want to go have or you want to go, you might want to go with a um, bigger bucket if you're doing a bigger track, kind of like I am with Charlotte. So you can get these at Home Depot. Kind of show you guys. It's heavy. Trust me, it's heavy. Um, so pretty simple here. All we have to do is just take out the joint compound, try and do it with my hands, so, and just put her down, nice and smooth, like, like so. That's why the caulking really helps. So, just nice and smooth, do it again, just place it down. Nice and smooth, get it all spread out. So you just do this to the, pretty much the entire board, pretty all the, get, yeah, just do it on the t entire board pretty much um, that you've prepared. And you gotta let this stuff dry for a while. Um, if if you're going to be building banking, like I am, I'm going to show that in a few minutes. Um, you you don't have to, you can build the bankings when the joint compound's still drying. But if you're not going to build bankings, you're just building a flat track, uh, you've got to let this stuff dry for about a day or a day, maybe overnight. It depends how fast it dries, but it usually takes about a day or two to dry. So... After this, we'll get on with, I'll show you guys how to make the banking. Okay, so I've put on the joint compound. Now it's going to dry again. It's going to take a while. And and if you just don't want to add any banking, just let it dry for a day or two before you continue working on it. Then spray away on the inside. Move up. Spray more insulation. Get some under knee, um, move up, move up again, And that's how you do it. Just a quick note, um, you're going to 
want to keep an eye on the insulation because it does expand. So if it starts to expand like right here, well that was unexpected, just try and spread it out a bit, try and smooth it out as best as you can. You want to try and keep it level with the the planks if you can. Just a couple quick notes first of all. I mean my attempts to keep the insulation from expanding and getting out of control went a little a wire. Um, not perfect. Better than Daytona. I'm going to try and work with it as best I can but um, should be fine I hope. You, worst case scenario I'll have to use a knife and cut it or I'll have to Oh, but I'm going to try and put the spackle over it. So, I'm going to show in the video, but I kind of screwed up with the insulation. It, so it really expands. And it really expanded on me. I mean, I, I had way too steep banking. So, I tore it up. I just pretty much redid it so all I did is I just did just kinda sprayed it lightly and then right here and then just kinda trying to get a little bit of a banking so you you just have to keep in mind that you do not need that much insulation to give you good banking because I mean it really expands so I mean so that's just a quick note. Just try and do the best you can. It's something that I'm still having issues with and I mean it's not an easy process. Okay so it is a day later after I recorded the last shot. A day and a half. But so you can see here I have I, I've put on the joint compound. I did that yesterday on, on the banking so that is still pretty much drying so but so yeah you can see over there so I so sometimes the surface will crack like right here You'll, you may see some cracks here um, I, I try to repair them I mean do so I'll do maybe another light coat of joint compound over those cracks but I mean, I mean, it, you're you're not gonna get them all, so just remember that. I mean, it really cracks up here on the. Excuse me. It really cracks up here on the insulation, for the banking. So you're gonna have to probably apply a, another light coat, but this is almost dry, so. The good news is if, is if you do a light coat, it dries pretty quick. So, so really the next step is you you sand you pretty much just sand the the table, which is what I'm going to do. I can't do the banking yet because that's still drying, but I mean I'm really anxious to keep going. So I'm gonna sand whatever's dry and I'll vacuum that up. So that's the next step. I just want to show this real quick too. So because I've, I've been waiting, I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to get some stuff done here. So I've been working on the walls. So, so the walls for Charlotte, um, this video is going out after the, um, after the um, Memorial Day. But right now when I'm working on this track, it's Memorial Day weekend. Um, so I have on the TV, excuse me, I have, I have cut practice, a recording of cut practice from earlier today. And I'm just looking at some of the shots and I'm trying to see, like, so for example, we're in turn four. So the design they have for the, the wall. 
I'm trying to mimic that. I've already mimicked it for the front stretch. Let me show here. I'm just trying to get this all in one piece. So, oh, I don't think it did anything. Um, so there's what I have for the front stretch. The restart zone, that's not completely accurate, but I mean, short, it, nothing's gonna scale up, right? I got the Charlotte USA sign, and then of course on the TV I have the turn four um, sign I'm gonna work on. What I'm doing is, so for a lot of my tracks I use styrofoam. I just get a big board, like you can see over there, and I just pretty much cut it with a steak knife. I'll just, I like to sketch it with a pencil, just so I can get a, um, a precise cut, or as precise as a cut I can. And what, and I mean, the issue with the styrofoam is that it doesn't, I don't, I don't think it looks as good as, say, you do use balsa wood or, I mean, that looks really good. I mean, if you've watched um, the, the race I did at Evergreen Speedway, I use balsa wood for the outside walls. I mean, I, I love the way the track, that the track looks with the um, balsa wood because it just looks so smooth. The walls look solid. I mean, it looks great, especially if you're going to have to do a design like I am with Charlotte. So what I did is because of the banking, I'm not able to use the balsa wood. At least I could use it on the straightaways, but I couldn't use it on the turns because of the banking. What I decided to do instead is, is so I'm just cutting out strips of paper and I'm coloring and with permanent marker First I sketch out with pencil, then I'll color with permanent marker, except for the the SMI logo. But I'm just draw pretty much drawing on the design. I'm trying to mimic it as precise as I can from, from the track. And then I'm just gluing it onto the styrofoam. I I'm the first time I'm trying this, I think it'll look really cool, but I mean I don't know, so. Okay, I've I've just finished sanding, or well, I finished a while ago, but I finished sanding the the track surface, so now it's all nice and smooth. Just vacuumed up the the um, the remnants and drew outline. I outlined the track, as you can see here. Got the roval and the oval both. Um, and I'm ready to paint. I'm going to be painting with a charcoal color because I mean, trying I'm trying to get it to the track surface to look a little wore out. It'll be my first time using charcoal as a color, so should be interesting. But other than that, I mean, just gotta paint and that I mean. Put down the fake grass, I'll show how to do that, and put up the walls, and that's about it. Well, it, it, I am in the middle of painting. I still got all, more painting to do, but as you can see, the track is shaping up pretty well. I think it looks pretty cool. 
it, this is always the most rewarding part when you're everything's starting to come together and and you're just saying what you're what you've created just coming together it's really cool I haven't gotten much further with the walls than I was yesterday I still got three four so I, I still got the walls to do a lot more of but the rest of the track is coming along nicely so hopefully I'll be able to get a lot more work done and get at least at least get the painting done on the track by tonight and the last thing I'll have to do is just put on the walls so that's that's it okay it's several hours later I'm I've spent pretty much all day painting so this is what I've got so far pretty much I think I'm mainly done with the painting there's a few things I think I have left to paint but I've got most of the painting done I did make a couple um, adjustments I tried s smoothing out the banking I put some uh, some touch-up spots joint compound as you can see here that's still drying, but I was able to paint over the rest. I sanded and painted over the rest just to keep make it smooth a little smoother. So next thing I'm going to do tomorrow is well let's see. It's late at night, I'm just thinking. Well, next thing I'll be to take care of the grass. I might have a different bag of grass but basically something like that I know Charlotte has fake grass at least for the front here I'm but I'm gonna try and put down at least a thin oh that's still trying put down a thin layer of of fake grass and I'll show how to do that tomorrow but I'll and I'll just place it all over so yeah I'm going to bed I'm gonna take a shower go eat and go to bed right now okay so I checked I I was going to originally oops I was originally gonna put down this fake grass but I changed my mind I, I think I got a little lazy actually I was I was low on glue that was part of my thinking and also because the front the front stretch has artificial turf I mean putting real grass down wouldn't look exactly realistic so this actually looks fine but I just decided to put grass this sort of grass on the rest of the spot so you can get a big roll of um, this grass artificial grass you could get smaller ones at a place like Hobby Lobby and probably any arts and crafts store but this is a big roll I think it's eight foot by four foot something like that I mean good to have you just cut out some strips and just kinda try and work it along the outline of what you've painted for the grass and then just put some glue down and put her over get some weights on there to get it to sit like you can see here and you don't yeah so that's pretty much it for the if you wanted to do this sort of green grass what you would have to do is take you, ju you just take some Elmer's glue you spray it all over the you'd spray it all over the you make some, you just spray it over to the place you're, um, you probably want to do it in small sections. So say, start with this section first, just spray, put some Elmer's glue, and then you want to take a paintbrush, and you just want to put, bring the, just get the glue out. Just spread it around all over the spot, then you just take some of the grass, sprinkle it, and then you take a, 
a hair comb and just spray it or just spread it out and try and of course you want to cover all the spots but um but um it I mean sometimes yeah and then afterwards you what you'd have to do you, in an arts and or a hobby a hobby store you'd have to get this I think it's like concrete glue or whatever you and then you need a spray bottle and you just spray it on top of the of the grass layers do several do that several times to try and get the grass to stick to the surface I I know it's I'm kind of I'm not doing a very good job describing that I mean you can look it up probably look it up on YouTube to find a video showing how to do that so yeah I'm just gonna keep making some cuts with the grass and going to put it put put the grass down I still have some paint touch-ups I have to make and then um, then it's then it's time to keep working on the walls so that'll be the next step just making another quick update guys um almost done still putting on the finishing touches for the walls um, but this is what I've got, pretty much all set. You see with the walls, I mean, just use Elmer's glue to glue the styrofoam on. I've got weights trying to put pressure on the styrofoam to get the it to, I guess, stick with the glue. See here, some of what I've done with the weights to get the styrofoam to fit. The, the shape I want it to, but yeah, I finished pretty much, I'm still working on the designs for the walls right now. Um, almost done with that. I've st still got some inside walls to put on right here, right here. I still got a couple things left to paint. Barriers. See here, I still gotta paint those. And got a few more logos to put down, and that's that's it. We're almost done. Really close. Alrighty guys, I just finished up making Charlotte. Here she is. Man, I, this track is so cool, I'm just, I think this is the best one I've made so far. Um, I'm just really happy with the way it turned out. I think the charcoal paint, because it's not black, I think that gives it more of a realistic feel to the track. Because, of course, tracks wear out the, I mean, the asphalt, of course, changes, wears out, so I think it, the charcoal gives the track a much um, more of a realistic feel. So, see what I did here, the Charlotte Motor Speedway, I have the SMI logos, I have Tums, Bank of America, the Coca-Cola 600, Toyota. Oh, and I this is my first time getting a little crazy with Victory Lane, but I think that looks cool. I have my Charlotte logo I made. All this, all the painting I did by hand. I, you can, if you wanna, with some of the painting, I don't know if I noticed this. I did all this by hand, but um, one of the things you can do is you can use, um, what is it, the blue tape? What, I forget what it's called, for that people use for painting. You can try and use it to try and make your lines nice. But um, one of the issues is is sometimes it'll take up the, the paint on the track surface. And I mean, got to go back and repair it. I mean, it's kind of a pain. So I just use a small paintbrush and make the paints. And then I use permanent marker for my walls, so... All these designs I got from the from the track itself and I just did them on P 
paper permit marker and then just glued them on to the track. I think, well, I'm really happy I made that decision. Um, barriers here. Um, you can get those, of course, at a hobby store. So that's how you build a track like the Perfect 8 Cup series. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I really, I would really would appreciate if your subscription. Um, if you have any questions, just ask down below in the comments and I'll try and give a good answer. I hope this video was clear, clear enough. I mean, clear and what's the word? It was, I, everything makes sense. I mean, I, I know I, I don't know how well I've explained things in this video. I hope I've done a good job of that. So I, so I hope this helps you guys how to, gives you some tips and suggestions how to build your own racetracks. And thank you for watching this video. And look out for my next stop motion race, which will be the Coca-Cola 600 at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Only five races left for the Perfect 8 Cup Series. The next two races will be here. So we'll run on the one and a half mile track and then we'll run the Roval. So should be fun. Thank you for watching this video and see you later.